Okay, we're back, and you've got your piece all finished with sanding and pockets cut into it. Now we're going to go ahead and lay out the Celtic knots. And usually I just put my finger, you can put your finger right there with the pencil, bring it in so far, and then just edge it all the way around. You'll have to put three lines across, one on each side and then one right in the middle of those two lines. Then from there, you block the end. Then all you're doing is you're making a grid pattern with lines and dots. And you'll want to put a dot on each corner of the squares then one in the center of each square. And the more even these squares are and your circles, the better your pattern will come out. And here's one that's a little bigger. And you can see how set up the grid pattern, three lines, outer and outer, center then put your circles on it. And then you're just going in between those circles and connecting the circles. more uniform you make your circles, the better your pattern is going to come out. And you can just see it's just connecting dots is all. And then when you burn this in, you can actually line up each line. Like this line's a little further this way here than this line here is. It doesn't line up perfect. So you could actually burn this in a little bit over here or back over a little bit here. That's how I get the, the knots to line up. Uh, David Nichols demonstrates really good on how to do the Celtic knots. The hardest one I found was this side piece because you don't have the whole squares all the way out the end. And I had to learn, kind of learn how to do this on my own. And it's coming out better, I think. So, and I don't. I don't really do the bottoms right now. As soon as you get your your edge piece done for your bowl rest, go ahead and I burn it in. And after I burn it in, I take steel wool and I, I steel wool off all the ink or the lead from the pencil, all your markings. That way I get this set up first. Then I go ahead and I burn in the, just the sides, not the bottom, for the braces. And this just holds that bowl rest good and sturdy on that backing plate. That's all you're doing there. And as soon as I get those burnt in on the sides, I get them decorated here, drawn on with pencil. Bottom ones are a little bit different because I make really big circles, especially about, I don't know, inch and a half in. Then I go ahead and I pre-drill this, clean through, and I use a uh, 5 30 seconds drill bit to go clean through this. Then I come back and I countersink it with a 3 16 drill bit. And on it, I only countersink it down about 3 eighths of an inch. You can even go probably a quarter. And that's just so that you can, you can put the screw all the way in. Because the piece I'm doing is an inch and a quarter, and these screws are an inch and a quarter. So by doing it that way there, I get Get enough penetration, I think, on this 
top plate, but it doesn't go clean through on the your bowl rests. Clean through. And as soon as I get that done, then I go ahead and I'll set this up. And usually I set it on a, a piece of wood, flat surface. Good flat surface. Now I'll get it spaced. And on the spacing, usually use a, another one by on each side just to space it in so then it's even I go ahead then at that point I glue this and clamp it and let it sit overnight then the next morning I go ahead and I put the screws in screw those down tight then I go ahead and I cut a couple of plugs. I've got a lathe, so I turn out turn it out with a lathe, and I put plugs and uh, glue in these bottom holes. Then I'll burn this all in and steel wool it off, and that hides those screw holes. Hides them pretty good. This is one I've I've got done, and you can just barely see that. And same thing over here. Right? Then when your piece is done, like that, get your backing plate that's ready to go. I set those down on it where it's going to be. I get it good and squared. Then I'll take a pencil and go around that all the way around, even down on the bottoms. And I set it up with lines, so then I pre-drill this, again with a 532nd spit, and I put five holes on the bottom that holds the pipe rest. Then on the top section where your stem holder will be, I do the same thing. I mark it straight across with a, a square, so everything's squared. And I'll set that up and I'll mark both sides and then I drill four holes in it and I try to put the holes so that they're going to line up with the center sections of each one of these pieces so you've got a lot more material to run the screw into then I mark on the bottoms and I pre-drill the bottoms even on this plate here and I, I drill those out eighth inch. Then it's just a matter of taking steel wool and I steel wool off the pencil marks and then gets any of the high spots off of what you burnt in. And then uh, I go ahead and I glue it and I'll screw those together. Then it's just a matter of uh, finishing it up with your mid wax or stain or whatever you're going to use. I think I've gone over everything. These pipe racks here are uh, designed for a church warden, a tavern pipe. Uh, Flogle Works has some really good pipes and they fit pretty good. They're for a long, long stem pipe. Then uh, this is one I'm making right now. It's a little wider than even the picture that I've, I've got on it, but I'm kind of basing it off of a uh, Dutch pipe rack, and it'll hold two pipes on each side, and they're the tall church wardens. And it actually has a place for a uh, it's a brass humidor on it, and I picked one up down at one of the flea markets in Colorado and it'll sit in there real nice I've just got to add, I'm going to finish by uh, getting these pieces for the pipe stems 
sand it up and then I'll get those attached. They're for the church warden pipes, which are the big long ones like this here. Flogger Works also has a really good long stem pipes. They're Lord of the Rings style pipes. And then it'll just hang on the wall. And I hope, hope you guys enjoyed what I put out on the video and uh, hope the information can help somebody. I had a hard time learning how to do these pockets when I first started doing this. I, I was trying the Dremel tools and everything and now I just use a router. And it goes much quicker, even. You get a better uh, quality pocket, I think, that way. That's it. And this is my first videos on YouTube ever. Hope you guys enjoy the information and uh, if you got any comments or questions, just go ahead and, and leave a comment or question. Uh, thank you and we'll see you later.